Hi, I'm Fahim, co-founder of Educative. In this video, I'll walk through the basics of system design and highlight what you need to know for a system design interview. Let's get started. Typically, you would see three different categories of interviews. One is your standard coding interviews, in which you would be quizzed with, you, you will be given an algorithmic challenge. You would have to solve the problem. You would have to talk about the code complexity. You would have to come up with good test cases to analyze your solution. Uh, you may have to talk about the space complexity as well. Um, all of those things. The second kind of interview is your cultural fit interview, which is where people are going to judge you on how you are able to collaborate and work in a team environment. So the questions will be around how do you resolve conflicts, how, you handle the, how do you handle difficult situations, um, how do you work with other team members, and your interviewer would want to know about some real life scenarios where you were in a difficult situation and how did you manage or resolve that situation. And the third kind of interviews is the most interesting and the diverse part, which is design interviews. Now design, based on where you're interviewing and what for what level are you interviewing, and even within the same company, for which group or team are you interviewing, varies. For some people, the design interviews would end up being object-oriented design interviews. For other people, it would be an API slash product design interview. And then for some other people, it would be a system design interview. Many of the junior developers would typically see object-oriented design interviews where people would want to see how do they design components within a big code base. If you're interviewing for a web skill startup or a fan company, then you would most likely encounter a API product design interview where you would be building the overall scalability design of an application and how the client side and the server side would work. For example, if you're designing Facebook's newsfeed, there is some server side components that you would have to build, and then you would have to build a client side that would efficiently load the feed on the, on the user's mobile, on the user's laptop or browser uh, in an efficient, fast manner. And then for some companies who are building the infrastructure, you would be asked system design interview questions where you would be scaling either storage or you would be scaling either compute or you would be scaling how to search efficiently, all of those good things. A good example would be how would you design Facebook's post search, where you would have to rank multiple posts, you would have to look at uh, which posts are relevant for the search query, which posts are can this user see based on all the permissions on each post, and then you would have to rank them and return a result back. How is reshaded approach helps you design systems. It starts from, it's an acronym that comprises of requirements, estimations, storage, schema, and design, high-level design, API design, detailed design, evaluation of your design, and then distinctive components of your design. And it's a generic formula to at least address all the important parts of your system design. Let's take an example. You're designing Uber. So you have to come up with the requirements. What are the requirements? There is a certain amount of passengers or riders who are requesting rides. There is drivers connected to your servers and you have to make these matches in almost real time. Then when the match is made, you need to like track the driver, you need to track the passenger, you need to track uh, both of their like corresponding locations and then when the ride starts, you still need to track where the vehicle is at and uh, show that in real time. So this, those are your requirements. Now, to serve those requirements, you need estimations. How many people are going to request rides each minute? How many riders would be connected to your system in each hour, in each day? How many drivers would be connected to your system? How many active rides would be happening every day? How many payments will be processed? All of these are estimations that you need to understand at least at a, at a basic level to design a system that would fulfill the requirements that you have. Now, take the storage schema. Of course, based on those requirements, you would come up with a great storage schema. 
that will be scalable, that will be efficient, that will meet the consistency requirements of your solution. Some things could be eventually consistent. For some other things, you would have to be immediately and strongly consistent. Uh, for example, you don't want to charge the customer twice. So if you have processed their credit card once, you have to like store this information right away. If you double charge your customer, that'll be a very bad experience. So you need to be immediately and strongly consistent. In other cases where the customer has given you feedback uh, or they have some, given some feedback for the driver, then that feedback can be stored with like some less strict requirements. So you could be eventually consistent over there. It doesn't need to show up in real time. And even if for some reason you, ha you ended up storing it twice, it's not going to be the end of the world. So storage schema is important. Then comes the overall high-level design. How are servers going to interact with your backend storage systems? How are those storage systems going to interact with caching? If there is a queuing service, if there is a search service, if there is an identifi identifier creation service, all of those services, how are they going to work together to create an amazing experience for your riders and for your drivers? API design is, of course, like these applications and services will be working behind standard APIs, and your application will be calling these APIs to uh, get those responses back. Then comes the detail design. That is where rubber hits the road. You need to like now look at how each of these servers will be designed in detail, what are the requirements, how much how many of these you would need what kind of like consistency requirements you would have what kind of durability requirements you would have like you don't want to like lose any data you may have to over provision your systems to handle spiky loads for example if you're trying to serve rides after a football match or a concert then there will be a lot of spiky traffic. So you might have to over-provision your system to handle those requirements. And that is all part of the detailed design. And then, of course, you have to evaluate your design that how would it end up scaling? How would it, like, how would it be future-proof? How would you evolve and maintain the system as your users grow and the requirements grow? In every system, there is some distinctive components that you have to talk about, which is, beyond the scope of this generic design of storage systems and web servers and how they would interact with search systems and caching. So these distinctive systems are unique to most applications. And I think the, in, in, in the case of our example Uber, the most distinctive component is the matchmaking process between a rider and a passenger. That has to happen in real time. You have to effectively find drivers that are nearby and then schedule and route one of those drivers to pick up the passenger. And that's the most important task of designing Uber. And that's the distinctive component that you may have to dive deep more in order to come up with the value prop for this application. Each problem that we have in our courses is structured around this framework. So we start with the requirements, we give estimates, we come up with a good storage schema based on those estimates. We have a high-level design. We come up with the APIs and those and parameters. We evaluate those APIs and that high-level design against the requirements that we had identified at the beginning. And then we come up with the distinctive components that are very specific to that application. Reshaded allows you to give a very comprehensive answer and ensures that you're not missing any key components of the design during the interview. Especially, there is a danger that you could rabbit hole in one area and then you would like spend all the time in ta talking about that one specific area and then missing out on or skipping all the other things that you should have mentioned to come up with a more reasonable or a more comprehensive solution. Building blocks are the core components that you need to understand to design most distributed scale services. These components are present in almost every service that you use. Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, Uber. Any service that you use, these components are there in some form. Now, the art is to understand these basic systems and then come up with the right configuration in which you would set up these systems to achieve the goal that you're aiming for. For example, in Spotify, the goal is to 
start playing music as soon as possible. Versus in Twitter, the goal is to show the news feed as soon as possible, a relevant, useful news feed personalized for each user. For Uber, the goal is to do a matchmaking between the rider and the driver as soon as possible. To achieve these goals, we use these building blocks and configure them in certain orders, like we know that the latency requirements have to be met, or durability requirements have to be met, or response time is important to us. Whatever is important to us, that's where we would gravitate and we would like configure the system to achieve that. So with that out of the way, what are those common building blocks? So those are load balancers, caches, key value stores, databases, blob stores, CDNs, messaging queues, rate limiters, and domain name systems. And then there is also some specialized building blocks that are not always used, but they're very frequently used. For example, sharded counters. Sharded counters are needed when you have to add or subtract in a frequently updated counter. For example, likes on a tweet that a celebrity tweeted. The likes can go up very quickly and you would have to use sharded counters to achieve that. Sequencers which are your ID generators. Each object that you store in your database needs an ID, and that ID has to be unique. So if you're adding thousands of new photos in Instagram per minute, you need an ID generator that can generate thousands of new IDs that are unique in your system. Similarly, task schedulers, distributed logging, distributed search, pub sub services, service monitoring and analytics. These are all the building blocks that are required to create amazing scalable distributed systems. Most of the building blocks are provided by cloud providers or there is an open source implementation. And your job is to understand the nuances of that uh, system, to understand the limitations of that system, and then design and configure that system according to the requirements that you have. At a high level, we can come up with a boilerplate design that is applicable in most system design problems. Imagine a user hitting a service. Typically, the request will be received by a load balancer. That load balancer is going to forward the request to a web server. And there is a bunch of web servers that are all re receiving requests, most likely in a round robin fashion or some other distribution fashion. These servers are going to process the request and they're either going to store some data or they're either they're going to retrieve some data. For storage or retrieval, they are probably going to rely on some caching service. This caching service was, will allow us to quickly retrieve recently or frequently queried data. And these caching services will be backed up by a storage solution, typically a key value store or a more traditional RDBMS uh, based on what your storage requirements are. This will also feed data to a search service. In some cases, you may have to queue a task in a task scheduler, and that queue is going to then again update either the databases or your search service. Uh, you may also have a sequencer or an ID generator that is going to generate IDs for every object that is stored in your database. Um, you may have to push data to a content delivery network or a CDN uh, if your data is your blob data like movies or songs or videos, they're being accessed by uh, in multiple geographies. Um, and you may also have to have a rate limiter that would ensure that your service uh, can perform even if it is experiencing high load. Like Ticketmaster would experience high load when people are trying to book tickets for Taylor Swift's concert. 
So if you can draw this high level design or use this boilerplate to come up with your initial design, that will give you the 5,000 feet overview. And now your job is to take those components and configure them in an order that will suffice the requirements that you have already identified for the system that you're building. Now that you've come up with a boilerplate high-level design, you can use this high-level design to come up with a more detailed implementation design that will help you serve the customers and fulfill the requirements that you have identified in the requirements gathering phase. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment to tell us what you would like to see next. Interested in learning more about system design? Check out one of these videos.